The Tunkhannock Creek Viaduct has been called the ninth wonder of the world. It's a concrete deck arch bridge on the Nicholson Cutoff Railroad segment of the Norfolk Southern Railway Sunbury Line that spans Tunkhannock Creek in Nicholson, Pennsylvania. The massive reinforced concrete bridge celebrated its centennial in November 2015. The world's largest concrete railroad bridge for more than 50 years and one of the coolest bridges anywhere on the planet, the Tunkhannock Viaduct was built by the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad from 1912 to 1915 under the vision and direction of Railroad President Truesdale and was part of a major improvement to the railroad. It was dedicated and ready to go on November 6, 1915. The DL&W built the viaduct as part of its 39.6-mile Nicholson Cutoff, which replaced a winding and hilly section of the route between Scranton, Pennsylvania and Binghamton, New York, saving 3.6 miles, or 21 minutes of passenger train time, and one hour of freight train time. The bridge was designed by the DL&W's Abraham Burton Cohen and other key DL&W staff like Chief Engineer G.J. Ray, Engineer of Construction F.L. Wheaton, and resident engineer in charge of the construction, C.W. Simpson. The contractor was Flickwer and Bush, including general manager F.M. Talbot and superintendent W.C. Rittner. I wonder what's with all the initials. At the turn of the 20th century, the Lackawanna Valley, which included Scranton and along with neighboring Wilkesbury, was the industrial hub of northeastern Pennsylvania. Settled in the early 1800s, the area rapidly grew to be a hub of commerce and manufacturing because of the enormous anthracite coal reserves just below the surface. Pennsylvania's anthracite region eventually came to produce a whopping 80% of the world's anthracite coal, a clean, hot-burning fuel that was perfect for running machines and building empires. Now let me read that for you again. Pennsylvania's anthracite region eventually came to produce a whopping 80% of the world's anthracite. Not America's anthracite, the world's anthracite. A clean, hot-burning fuel that was perfect for running machines and building empires. Anthracite coal is formed by higher temperature and pressure and has a higher carbon content and burns cleaner and hotter than bituminous or soft coal. The state of Pennsylvania has three large anthracite coal fields. The northernmost field, which runs through Luzerne and Lackawanna counties. The middle field, which encompasses Carbon, Northumberland, Susquehanna, Schuylkill, and the southern Luzerne counties. And the southern field, which runs through Dauphin, Schuylkill, and Carbon counties. Although coal mining operations in northeastern Pennsylvania aren't anywhere near what they were in the 19th and early to mid 20th centuries, there's still a stable market for the legendary anthracite, that hard coal that northeastern Pennsylvania has the country's biggest supply of, the coal that fueled the Industrial Revolution and beyond, the coal that's used to this day for heating and still some industrial purposes such as steel manufacturing and sugar beet refining. Since it's rich in carbon, the highest grade anthracite is used for water filtration including municipal treatment plants. The high carbon content and the fact that it yields a high BTU when it burns make anthracite useful in metal smelting and fabrication. And while it's true that the black diamonds don't have as many outlets as they did a century ago, still, they haven't lost their luster or their lucrativeness. And contrary to what you might think, coal is still alive and kicking in northeastern Pennsylvania. Today, about 95% of the anthracite mined is from the Hazleton area south. However, north of Hazleton, Casey Casa Coal in the little town of Laughlin stands as one of the last coal breakers in northeastern Pennsylvania. Many historians consider Scranton as the industrial center of the region. The huge coal industry, iron and steel production, railroading and railroad building, food processing, Large-scale fabrication and the textiles industry all played a significant role in the area's growth. The region became the powerful engine that drove America's Industrial Revolution. Let me read that for you again. The region became the powerful engine that drove America's Industrial Revolution. Around the turn of the 20th century, the DL&W began to look at ways to straighten and flatten its route to Buffalo, New York in an attempt to be more competitive with nearby railroads. To do so, the Lackawanna used two cutoffs, one that straddled the Pennsylvania and New Jersey borders known as the New Jersey Cutoff, and later another in upstate Pennsylvania known as the Nicholson-Halstead Cutoff. The Nicholson Bridge provided the capacity for increased goods, including coal, iron, and steel, and passenger traffic in the Northeast that contributed to the Industrial Revolution in the United States. Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, and former President Theodore Roosevelt were among the many people that came to view this one-of-a-kind bridge. The Kingsley Bridge and Staruka Viaduct, also within the region and nearby Susquehanna County, are also a great must-see for those who love to see spectacular old bridges. 
Since being built, the ownership has passed through the DLNW to the Erie Lackawanna in 1960, Conrail in 1976, the Delaware and Hudson in the early 80s, Guilford Transportation in the early 80s, the New York, Susquehanna and Western, Canadian Pacific in 1991, and finally the Norfolk Southern in 2015, which had trackage rights over the Sunbury subdivision from 1999 to 2015 when they bought the line outright. Now the Sunbury Line, it goes from Binghamton, New York, down to DuPont Junction in DuPont, Pennsylvania, and continues on to Sunbury, Pennsylvania, as the river line where it meets the old Pennsylvania Railroad Buffalo Line into Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. At current, the segment between Binghamton and Scranton is one of the few U.S. lines that still signaled with safe train Uniland signals. In 1975, the American Society of Civil Engineers named the viaduct a National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark, and in 1977, it made its way onto the National Register of Historic Places. Accessible from routes 11 and 92, the bridge is part of the Viaduct Valleyway Scenic Byway. Say that fast three times. The bridge is 2,375 feet long and 34 a feet wide. It's 240 feet above stream hell level and 300 feet above bedrock. Oh there are 12 arches with 10 being 180 feet across and 2 being 100 foot arches. This makes the bridge longer and nearly as high as the famous Kinzua Bridge in northwest Pennsylvania. And it's also much larger than the nearby Staruka Viaduct that I mentioned earlier. The Tunkhannock Creek Viaduct is also known as the Nicholson Bridge, Nicholson Viaduct, or sometimes simply as the Tunkhannock Viaduct. For over a century, many have celebrated the Tunkhannock Viaduct as one of the world's most impressive man-made wonders. Even today, it continues to inspire awe in both casual onlookers, dedicated photographers, engineers, and architectural enthusiasts. The community honors its history every September during the annual Nicholson Bridge Day Festival. For Trains 21, call me AC.